Hi, and good morning. Welcome again to another edition of Market Analysis for today, April 3rd, 2023. I'm Giovanni Benicourt, analyst, trader, and operator, educator with Vantage Markets. Well, what a way to start our second quarter, our month, our first day of trading for April. Any hopes of a serene start to the second quarter have already been dashed by the Organization of the Petroleum Countries surprise oil production cuts. After a first quarter full of surprises, from blowout jobs data to the threat of a blown, full-blown banking crisis, investors could be forgiven for expecting a bit more stability in months ahead. The unexpected output cuts on top of those announced in October come after oil prices dipped in March amid the banking stress and fears over the economic outlook. Unsurprisingly, prices spiked to start the quarter's first trading day. The odds of another 25 basis point hike by the Federal Reserve next month have also risen to around 60% from less than 50 on Friday. So that should be something to watch on. Uh, Treasury yields were also on the rise. That's because the cartels move pushing prices higher is a potential blow in the Fed's battle against inflation. A fight it looked to be slowing win as to be slowly winning. Now, the White House isn't happy. The National Security Council said the cuts were not advisable and that it remained focused on prices for American consumers. The Biden administration may not be entirely blameless though. The U.S. had intended to buy back oil for a strategic petroleum reserve when prices fell to about $67.72 per barrel. But Energy, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm said that uh, late last month it would be difficult to do this uh, this year. Her comments meant the oil market just off 50 months lows suddenly lost a major potential buyer. So if OPEC's opportunism wasn't enough action to kick off to kick off the, the quarter, a flurry of employment data is around the the, uh, the corner this week, coming in March jobs report Friday. The jobs number, along with the latest inflationary pressures, could shape the future path for both the Fed and markets for the next for the months ahead. So with that being said, let's take a look at what the market is looking to do. I am uh, short the Nasdaq, okay? That because we had opened with a special strong gap down, okay? And that being said, that gap down will most likely, but will it be close today? I you know, this I don't know honestly to be done to be sincere with you, because of of uh, of the just a big movement on oil. Uh, this gap down my income might might be telling us that yeah we might be coming into a two sided market uh, starting tomorrow. So that's something for us to look at. You know the indices they had a very strong week to the upside, uh, committing on on Fridays and quarter uh, ramping to the close. Now there is a lot of upside momentum and normal development from here will be a slowing of of the rate of change of the uh, of last week's, as the indices make a series of higher highs and lows. But on the on less momentum as measured by breadth. There were you know, three consecutive gaps in, up in the uh, S&P beginning on, on Wednesday, and it is likely that a minimum momentum slows by Tuesday, and we begin to see a more two-sided market both intraday and day-to-day. So that being said, I'm short uh, the S&P. I am not in the uh, not in the. I'm I'm sh- I'm short the Nasdaq. I'm not in the S&P, even though it, it did open with a gap down, but it's looking to be closed. But at the open, at the bell, I, I assume this will continue to move to uh, move lower. Uh, however, I am long on on the Dow. I'm looking at the Dow. Could my, could the, the, the momentum of the upside could be uh, be having a, a, a opportunity here? So I am long on that. I'm also long on crude oil, but I am gonna wait to see if some of this gap will be closed. When it you know at one moment if it comes down to seventy nine dollars, then I'm, I'll be I'll be a buyer. Uh, in not gas, not gas has fluctuated a bit below two dollars, uh, but it's you know quickly recovering. Will it will it reach Friday's momentum and in, in, in high? That could be a possibility. Then I am also long on gold. I think gold we might be reaching 
that two thousand dollar marker today and i'm not in silver silver is trading lower i'm gonna wait for silver to because it, it opened with a gap down okay it opened with a gap down so i am wait it, it got close it got it got closed so i'm waiting for this to continue to show me a lower momentum and be a buyer somewhere around my my support uh, i am long in copper okay uh copper i'm looking for copper to do a you know a breakout a movement to the upside it did open however with a gap down okay so that's why i'm also on it i'm not in bitcoin bitcoin is looking to stay around the twenty-eight thousand marker and if we look at it we are make we are we are in a asymmetric triangle so any any movement out of out of it could be a potential opportunity now where will this move to the upside to the downside that's what we are waiting to find out the rsi however it is below the overbought territory so we could probably contemplate that a breakout to the upside might be contemplated might be in, in, the, in the works then we have here uh the euro euro is looking to push up to 109 perhaps uh rsi is for further away so that could be a, a scenario the pound is also looking to move higher above 124 uh, and that will happen if the dollar index happens to you know, trade below 102 towards the 1015 marker. And most likely, there'll be some pressure on the dollar because of the uh, movement of association movement on, on, on crude oil. Okay, so that's it for me today. I thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.